Hi, Chris here from ED Armadesso. Uh, welcome to today's two minute tip. Uh, today I want to talk about how we can use displacement control to help with convergence problems with uh, assembly models using nonlinear contact. Uh, quite often we get approached by customers that uh, you know they have large assemblies, uh, they have nonlinear contact, and they're finding that their the, uh, model is taking a long time to converge and in of, often they can't get a solution out and it's uh, they're having difficulties uh, and they approach us and ask for our advice uh, and the model you can see on the screen is typical of the sort of problems we, we get approached with so let's just have a look at this model zoom in we've got two flanges here uh, there's a right hand a larger flange a small flange they're held together by by a series of bolts uh, in the middle there's a gasket or a seal and I, I just want to zoom in on this seal uh, I've artificially put a small gap uh, of 10 microns between the left hand flange and the seal and the right hand flange and the seal now occasionally in these models there are true gaps in the system designed in gaps and sometimes these gaps or uh, small gaps are, are, are left over from the CAD model you know, sometimes the tolerance in the CAD model, when you bring it across, means that there's a small gap and these parts aren't truly in contact uh, as modelled. If we go down and look at the sort of analysis we might want to do on this, so let's just have a look at the uh, the loads. We have a series of uh, bolt pretension loads. We have a shear force on this face here and we're fixing it on the... Uh, on the larger flange this is typical of the sort of analysis we see it's normally done in two steps so the first step is to uh, apply a bolt pretension to the bolts to uh, bring the design bring the model together put pressure on the gasket on the seal uh, and then we apply uh, the, the shear load you know quite often we're, we're looking to see whether the seal opens up or what the pressures or stresses are in the seal so this is a typical uh, of the sort of model we see. Now if we try and solve this, we struggle with convergence. And, and the main issue is because these parts aren't initially in contact. At the start of the analysis, when you start to apply the load, only the right hand flange, which has the fixed displacement, is actually restrained. Uh, the seal itself sat in the middle with no contact is actually experiencing rigid body motion and again on the right hand side we've just applied a force to this there's nothing constraining in the, the left hand flange uh, so to get a solution out of this we have to really induce initial contact between these parts or we need to stabilize the model and there are a number of approaches we can use to do that I mean the most obvious one is we can offset the contact surfaces uh, when the gap is small, pretty valid approach, but when the gap's big and designed in, you might not want to do that. You, you, you're artificially uh, offsetting the, where the contact takes place. Uh, a second approach, and actually always useful, we can add weak springs. Weak springs will support the rigid body motions, particularly for this seal at the start of analysis. And, you know, we can do other things like we can apply the load very slowly. All these approaches have problems. Obviously, if we apply the load very slowly, we're increasing the number of time steps, we're increasing the, number, the solution time, and for large models, it can become uh, a bit of a problem. So, now let's just have a look at the results of, I've actually run this analysis. I, I applied weak springs to the model and applied the load, and let's have a look at what happened. Well, in this model, we failed to establish that initial contact between the parts. When we apply that bolt pretension, because there's an initial gap, the parts just pass through each other. And the solution, although we've got a solution out, it's obviously nonsense. And it's based on just the bolt pretension load acting against the weak springs I applied to the model. So what can we do to get around these sort of issues, convergence problems and uh, rigid body motion problems? Well, in this second model, it's exactly the same model. Uh, we have a fixed support, we have the bolt pretension, we have the shear load on this front face. But in this model, I've added an extra load step at the beginning. So if we look at the bolt pretension load, the bolt pretension load, the majority of it is applied in the second load step and then it's locked in the third load step. If we look at the force, the force is applied in load step three. Uh, and if we look at what I've added to this simulation, in the first load step, what I've done is apply a displacement to this end face, an axial displacement. And the axial displacement is 20.1 microns. 
just sufficient to close the 10 micron gap at the either side of the gasket or seal and a little bit extra just so there's some contact pressure between these parts so in that initial initial step time step time step one we're pushing this assembly together using displacement uh, and that should solve pretty robustly it should solve pretty quickly and shouldn't really suffer convergence problems once we brought this assembly together we can apply we can uh, remove the displacement loading you can see load step two and three i've deactivated by right mouse clicking and selecting deactivate so that displacement is only active on the first load step to bring the assembly together and then once the assembly is brought together we can apply the true loading the bolt load and the force as before and the solution should converge quite robustly so let's just have a look at, at the force convergence and as we can see the three uh, the three load steps have converged quite well not bad for a non-linear problem uh, large deflection we've uh, solved in 18 equilibrium iterations if we look at the deflection we can now see that the parts haven't passed through each other we've, we've established that contact before we've applied the true loads and we can see we've got a, a maximum displacement 38 microns we've got a stress on the uh, seal or gasket so that's an example of how we've used displacement control to provide stability to this analysis at the start uh, at the start of the simulation to get a solution uh, and get the solution to converge robustly and in a timely manner. Uh, thank you for attending today's two minute tip.